I met Richard Albert in 1968, mm -hmm. and uh, I brought him to, I birthed him into being Ram Dass. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of what happened. And then he wrote a book, and I was in the book. And so when I hit American shores in 71, there was a wave of spiritual beginnings. The Hare Krishna movement began. Swami Satchidananda began. Yogi Bhajan began. Ram Das, of course, was already going strong. And I showed up on the scene. And with such publicity that Ram Das had given me, I had a huge, huge following. I was the golden guru at 25 years old and thousands and thousands of people around me. And um, it freaked me out. And as I looked out over the masses of people and everyone waiting for me to give the word, I gave the word. And I looked out and I said, I don't know. And then I said, no one has anything to teach until they're 50. And I walked away. In following a spiritual path, one question is omnipresent. What is the importance of a teacher? And who should that teacher be? In order to, to fulfill the purpose of meditation, which is the realization of our deeper innermost possibility, to know God, if you will, it is necessary that we have in our lives and cultivate a connection and flow with somebody who's already established in that state. Because like I told you earlier about my, my place where I went to high school, which is 10,000 people in the middle of you know, cornfields in Indiana, you can't get there from, from here. From the, you can't get here from there, can you? For most of us, it is necessary that we cultivate a connection to someone who has had that profound experience of their total unity in everything. And that's what a guru is. What makes a master? Uh, is it because they talk good? Is it because they're excellent communicators? Uh, is it because they're good marketers <clears throat> um, and advertisers? And the answer to all of those, of course, is no. What makes people follow a Buddha or a Krishna or a Mohammed or a Jesus? Hmm? <clears throat> it's not what they say. It's not what they do. It's what they are. And by that, I mean state of being. But that state of being uh, is vibrational. Mm -hmm. It has a power and an amplitude to it. So you meet someone who lives in that state of being, uh, there is an entrainment energetically that happens. Uh, and all of a sudden, you are sitting there in their presence, and you start to change, your experience shifts, and you start to experience dimensions of being that you never experienced before. And everything in you says, this is truth, this is holy, this is sacred, this is, this is divine presence. I'm in the presence of a, of a saint, of a holy man, of something. Mm -hmm. And it is born of your experience. So all of those people who come and follow or be disciples or be part of, uh, it is born of that experience. I think that it is difficult to learn to meditate without having at least one good coach. Uh, just like it's difficult to learn to play the piano uh, without having somebody that can sit down and sort of show you how to play. Um, so I think from that perspective, having at least one teacher mm -hmm. is important. It's important to have a, a teacher or a guru who is your own race, mm -hmm. who speaks your language. You know, like I grew up with sitting in Denny's. I know Taco Bell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know what it's like on the LA freeway. 
I know how to navigate in this culture. Mm. Tibetans don't, right? Indians mm. don't. This is not their world. Mm. So then how can we communicate truly? You follow? Sure. Yeah. I mean, growing up in the ruggedness of Tibet, you know, yak herding and looking out over vast vistas, right? Right. Is another reality. So it's, it's, it's important to find teachers, I think, in your own culture also. To continue your own spiritual work, mm -hmm. you need someone you can really talk to. Who a can, frame of reference. Yeah, who's going to email you, who's maybe available on the telephone. Right. To deal with your mind um, in a certain way, you do need a little you know, skill, you need a little understanding. It's just almost like exercise or something. On the one hand, it's very natural. On the other hand, you do need a little advice in terms of what to do. They also say in Buddhism that a, a student who begins to meditate has to have some idea of what the target of the meditation is, what the purpose of the meditation is, that otherwise you're like a blind man wandering about in open country, you know, right. not knowing which way to go. So um, that's where teachers are useful. They can guide you, they can guide your meditation, they can give you some sense of what is the self that you're trying to look for, you, you know, uh, how do you find it, how do you, how do you train the mind. What a guru does is established in the, the ultimate reality which I also am comfortable calling unconditional love a guru accepts into his life into the field of ex his experience whomever presents themselves with whatever baggage it, it is that they bring which is usually a lot and lifts that baggage off the person in order that the creative energy in in that person can be released from the burden of their own self-doubt and self-rejection to you know expand and expose to that person the ultimate reality which is within them when you're doing meditation you have to be with the teacher. The reason why you have to be with the teacher is that there's a lot of different methods. It's like a shortcut, you know. You can go either long way to trying to really investigate as, you know, something you will want to find out. Or there is a short way you can gain a lot of good experiences without taking not too much time.